South Korea's government has learned the hard way why you shouldn't put all of your trust in remote cloud storage. And the worst part about this incident is that it was their own cloud storage system that ended up failing them. Last month, there was a lithium ion battery fire at South Korea's state data center that totally destroyed 96 different computer systems, which disrupted a wide range of public and government services, including email and KakaoTalk, the most popular instant messaging service slash super app in South Korea. Now, if you haven't heard of super apps, they're basically apps that do everything. They're fairly popular in that region of the world, and these apps primarily start off as messaging services, sort of like WhatsApp. In fact, WeChat is probably the most famous example, a super app that you probably have heard of. And the idea with these apps is once you have a lot of people using the messaging service, you just start adding in extra functionality like social media, banking, e-commerce, gaming, and basically everything that someone could possibly want to do online. And that way people spend all of their time within your app. But of course, one of the problems with this is that the infrastructure supporting the app if it goes down, life in that region basically grinds to a halt. All of a sudden, you can't pay for anything because everyone uses the app, especially in cities where a lot of businesses no longer accept cash. You can't message anyone, and God forbid you have a smart home that's reliant on any of this app's infrastructure or any other digital infrastructure that ended up going down. And now the Korean government has managed to restore most of these digital services after deploying over 70 firefighters and vehicles to put out the data center and hundreds more to handle the disaster recovery efforts. But one giant problem that the recovery team is running into is restoring the data that was kept on the South Korean government's cloud service called G Drive. Now, G Drive doesn't have anything to do with Google Drive or really any of Google services. The G in G Drive just stands for government, which South Korea started back in 2017. Not the South Korean government, but rather the cloud storage. And they did this to make it easier for their workers to share and store documents. And it was also supposed to make the data more secure and give South Korea some digital sovereignty since they managed this infrastructure entirely on their own. Over 125,000 public officials use this cloud storage, which held roughly 858 terabytes of data that has been permanently lost at this point. South Korea's Ministry of the Interior and Safety had issued guidelines to government employees that stated all work materials should be stored not on office PCs, but should be stored on G Drive. So the materials that were lost from this data center fire that ended up destroying the G Drive are most likely just not old archival documents that might not be that important, but they're probably data that was being worked on recently based on these statements that were published by the Chosun Daily. The South Korean government had a very cloud-centric workflow. <laughs> Everything was stored on G Drive, and I guess the cloud-centric workflow makes sense since South Korea has pretty fast internet. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if most government facilities had gigabit or faster connections, which makes the cloud just about as fast as a consumer USB hard drive that's plugged right into your desktop or laptop. Now, different agencies within South Korea have reported different levels of reliance on G Drive, despite that supposed mandate for all ministries to use it extensively. Uh, for example, the Ministry of Personnel Management, they actually mandated at that lower level that all of their documents be stored on the G Drive exclusively since 2016. And this was done after a break-in by a civil service exam applicant who stole some of this sensitive data. So they must have thought that keeping this information on a remote drive would make it more secure against theft, and it probably did, but the trade-off was a weakness to fire. So that ministry's restoration effort is basically going to involve them having to look through any documents that may have been cached locally on their computers. They're gonna have to go back into emails and download documents from there or scan hard copies if they still have any of them left back into digital copies to restore everything that was lost. And even then, that effort is only likely to recover documents that people were recently working on in the past couple of months. And to make matters worse, one of the National Information Resources officials that was working on this restoration effort ended up dying after falling from the roof of one of the government complexes.
Some agencies reported that the public official ended up taking his own life. We may never really know whether that happened or not, but clearly this data loss is going to be extremely devastating, not just to the operations of the South Korean government, but also to the digital sovereignty movement as a whole, because we've seen countless examples of governments making their digital infrastructure less reliant on big tech and by extension the U.S. government by building out their own solutions like the South Koreans did here or even simply by using free and open source software instead of Office 365 or some other cloud solution. But the failure of this cloud solution might end up making people a little bit more hesitant to you know, manage everything themselves. They might end up relying on Microsoft or Google or even end up using infrastructure as a service like AWS and then running their own software to support their own cloud. The redundancy and backup procedures that those third party services have pretty much ensures that you aren't going to lose your data in something like a fire or most other natural disasters. Obviously, there are other trade-offs like Google or Microsoft might just delete your data right under your nose and claim that it violated some obscure rule and not even really give you any details about what you did. And of course, you end up being dependent on those companies. You have to pay them every month, which may or may not cost you more money than running this yourself. But I hope this ends up serving as a lesson to people and institutions to just create multiple backups of their self-hosted cloud storage instead of getting discouraged by this and deciding to just rely on third-party providers Secure, redundant cloud storage that's 800 terabytes in size um, really isn't too difficult to set up. I mean, regular people like individuals, you know, YouTubers have set that up before, um, and they obviously have far fewer resources than the South Korean government. And it might actually be worth it to use third party clouds for some redundancy here. I mean, obviously, you don't want it to be your only backup and you don't even want it to be your primary solution, but I'm sure that the South Korean government is really wishing right now that they had a fully encrypted, complete backup on G Drive or some other remote cloud storage system right now. Of course, that wouldn't really be considered digital sovereignty, but it does make practical sense if you're using a strong encryption on the data. The only real risk there would be store now, decrypt later, which again, the same risk is carried with data that's being transferred over the wire anyway. Uh, or you would have the risk of somebody leaking the actual decryption password to that remote cloud storage. But again, you've got the same risk if somebody were to leak the password to G Drive, depending on how well that was locked down. So hopefully the South Korean government maintains its digital sovereignty and improves their backup procedures and continues with maintaining their own cloud instead of just giving up and going to a third party provider. If you enjoyed this video, please like and share it to hack the algorithm and check out my online store, Base.Win, where you can buy my awesome merch like this Base.Win t-shirt or accessories for your phone or laptop. 10% store-wide discount when you pay with Monero XMR at checkout. Have a great rest of your day.